Story time. <laughs> Nicole stepped out of her car into the bright morning sunlight, pausing to make sure her doors were locked before shutting them. As she turned around, Nicole breathed deeply of the fresh Franken moth air. With few clouds, a decent temperature, and an endless supply of spirits around her, she knew this day would be perfect. Walking swiftly through the mass of already parked cars, Nicole weaved her way towards Main Street, where all of the shops were located. Pausing between two shops, Nicole took in the scene that was Oktoberfest. She heard so much about it, but this was the first year she was permitted to attend, and that was only because she finally moved out of her parents' house, and her dad couldn't tell her no. Bright banners pronouncing Oktoberfest in English and in German were hung across the three-lane road that traveled through the middle of Frankenmouth. People in all sorts of dress, most casual, while some fancied dressing up as tavern wenches, bustled here and there, crowding the sidewalks. Nicole stepped into an opening between two families and made her way to the crosswalk. Her destination was across the street in the brick-laden space between the Bavarian Inn. The stoplight for the passing cars turned yellow, then quickly to red, and the crosswalk lit up white for the pedestrians to cross. In the center of the mob crossing the street, Nicole was stuck behind a man who was smoking. She tried not to cough loudly as he blew smoke and it hit her directly in the face. She tried shifting to her left, out of the way, but was elbowed back by a disgruntled looking man, who muttered curses under his alcohol-tainted breath. Once on the sidewalk again, Nicole stepped to the side and waited, letting the smoker and the disgruntled stranger move along ahead of her. She took a deep breath and then continued on her way, determined not to let such a small incident rant on her high spirits. She looked up, scanning the crowd as she entered the pub area. She wasn't looking for anything, or anyone in particular, but someone did catch her eye, the disgruntled man who'd elbowed her. He was behind one of the serving tables at the second pump for the sidewalk stooped a bit and mumbling to the lady who was filling steins with foamy beer. She nodded, handed the stein to the waiting customer, then took something from the disgruntled man and left the tent. Nicole was intrigued and stepped back towards the sidewalk so she could see behind the tents. The lady was holding a small vial and was pulling the cork out of the top of it. In front of her, on the ground, was a keg into which she poured whatever was in the vial replacing the corks on both, and stashing the now-empty vial in her bosom. As the lady ducked back into the tent where she was working, Nicole walked back around to the front of it, a small ping of fear striking her heart as she saw the disgruntled man moving next to the tent over and speaking in hushed tones to a lady working there as well. Pushing her long, brown hair out of her face, Nicole scanned the crowd, looking to see if anyone else noticed what was going on. Everyone was completely oblivious, going about their merry ways, laughing, shouting, stumbling about. Nicole's thirst for beer was suddenly gone. She stepped out of the way of a couple of teens stumbling by and kept her eye on the suspicious man. She watched as he visited every single pub, handing off something which she didn't see clearly to each worker who dipped behind the back of the tent momentarily before returning. She didn't need to see what was going on to know it was little vials of whatever it was that was being used to spike the awaiting kegs. Nervously, Nicole scanned the length of the pubs and noticed that the lady in the second one was dragging a keg back behind the tent and reappearing with an apparently heavier one. Oh no, Nicole thought to herself as she watched the lady started filling a stein from the keg. She watched as it was passed to a middle-aged looking man who swapped it for a tent and walked away. Nicole spotted a police officer nearby and weaved her way around over to him. When she approached, the officer asked what he could do for her. Explaining what she had seen, Nicole kept an eye on the man who had gotten the, what she assumed to be as a tainted beer, not wanting to lose sight of him. The police officer The police officer just laughed and dismissed Nicole's concern, telling it it was of no worry, and didn't she think she should be in high school right now instead of Oktoberfest? Offended, Nicole snapped at the police officer that she was 23 
and didn't need him to tell her where to be, and then walked off in a huff. That's when somebody screamed. Nicole looked up to see the man she had been eyeing, laying on the ground convulsing spasmatically. The stein spilled on the grass next to him. Her eyes wide, Nicole looked back for the policeman, but he was gone. She spun around, eyes searching, but he was nowhere to be found. Across the grounds, someone else screamed, followed quickly by another scream a short distance away. Nicole scanned the crowd and saw to her horror as one person after another began to collapse to the ground and convulsing spasmatically. She looked around, seeing a metal statue nearby. She climbed it so she could see over the crowd easier. One after another after another, people collapsed where they stood and started convulsing. She looked back to the first man and saw that he was weakly coughing up bloody foam, a good deal of it already next to him and all over his clothes. Stifling a scream, Nicole watched helplessly as the man gave another weak cough and then stopped moving. The women near him were screaming and crying, but it appeared he was here alone as nobody was stopping to hug or even help him. Eyes scanning the crowd, Nicole watched as the ground slowly turned from the gray bricks and green grass to a growing puddle of foamy blood. Tears stung her eyes, prickling at the back of her nose, but she didn't dare let go of the statue she was on. As she watched, more than half of the crowd collapsed, convulsed, and died. Then another half until there was only a few left, mostly the young children who were obviously too young for drinking, and they were left to sob next to their mothers or fathers, shaking their lifeless bodies. Nicole looked at the line of pubs where all the workers were drinking from the steins as well. What is wrong with them? she thought, watching as each slowly began coughing, and eventually all of them collapsed as well. She had no idea why they would drink it, knowing it was tainted. Vicious chuckling from behind her made Nicole whip her head around, almost falling off the statue as she did. Behind her was the disgruntled man from the crosswalk, surveying the countless corpses around the grounds in the massive pool of beer and blood. Well, I guess that takes care of that, the man said smiling maniacally up at Nicole before turning heel to leave. Nicole shouted after him, questioning why he did it. He paused, turning to smile at her again with his dirty, yellowed teeth, but said nothing. As he turned and walked away, the bells began to chime a cheery song from high above Nicole's head.